Hello and welcome to a Microtasker Shorts video. In this video we'll be looking at a USB CDC connection between two Freedom boards, the K64 and the K66. Hi, I'm Mark from the Microtasker project. I'm going to be showing you how to take Freedom K64 board working as a host. Note that we have J21 connected for host power supply. And this is the K66 Freedom Board, which we're going to be connecting as a device. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be building the Freedom K66 project as a USB CDC host. To do this, I open the config file in the Microtasker project and I select the target that I want to use. I deselect the target which was originally activated. And here I'm enabling the Freedom K64 F board. In the USB section, I enable the USB interface. Then I select the host mode rather than device mode of operation. And here I confirm that I have USB CDC host support. And I'm going to just be allowing one CDC interface. I'm going to be building with the GNU compiler and a make file, so I select this target in Visual Studio. What I have to do is to ensure that the make file is set up correctly. So I check in here. The first thing that I need to verify is that we have the correct processor core, which is a M4 with floating point, so I select that here. The other thing that I have to do is to make sure that we're using the correct linker script file. So I move to the bottom and I change this to K1M because we have one megabyte of flash and 256 because we have 256 kilobytes of RAM. With that done, I can now build the project. Notice that after the Visual Studio project is built, a post-build step is executed. This is now cross-compiling for our hardware target. This has successfully built. If I look on my hard disk, I now have a file which can be loaded to the board. When I connect my Freedom board to the PC, it shows up as an external hard drive, and I can drag and drop this onto it. Here I have a terminal emulated connected to the OpenSTA virtual COM port of the board and when the board starts I get a hello world message showing the, the name of the board. I also have a menu which we'll be using later to communicate with the other board. What we must now do however is to build the project for the Freedom K66 board as well. So I follow the same procedure I comment out the K64 target, I comment in the Freedom K66 target, then I move down to the USB section again. In the USB section, I disable the host mode of operation, that defaults then to the device mode, and in the device configuration, I configure for a CDC device. And this CDC device will also have just one CDC interface. There is one detail to note when using the K66 chip. The K66 has two USB controllers. It has a full and low speed controller and it has also a full, low speed and high speed controller. The interface connection on the Freedom K66 board uses the high speed interface. Again I check that I have the target with the GNU build and I check my make file. The Freedom K66 has 512 kilobytes of flash rather than one mega 
but otherwise it's actually compatible with the configuration for the K64. Now I can build for the K66 target. Here we have the successful build for the Freedom K66F board. And again we have a file, a binary file which has been generated, which we can load to the board. As in the case of the K64 board, the Freedom K66 board also appears as an external hard drive and I can just drag and drop this binary file onto it to program it. Now that we've done our preparation work, we can start doing some practical tests. As a reminder, this is the Freedom K64 board, which is programmed as a USB host. It's connected to the TerraTerm interface, so if I make a reset, we see some debug outputs. And this is the Freedom K66 board, which is programmed as a USB CDC device. I'm going to connect the two together now. And the first thing we see is that the host has detected a device being connected. It sees that it is a CDC device and it sees its bulk in and out endpoints, 64 bytes in size, both on endpoint 1. It also has a control interrupt endpoint on endpoint 2. Now I'm going into one of the menus. There's a menu 6 which is for USB operation. And here we have a command which is called virtual com command. Now originally when I was communicating with the debug interface the uh, signal was coming over the UART connection and the command line interface here was then responding directly. Now I've switched it into this bypass mode which means that all of the communication is now being bridged onto the interface between the two boards. It will be passing over to the K66 where we also have a command line interface and it's this command line interface which will then respond. So let's try to see whether that's working whether that works. I'll hit an enter and now we get the menu. We're getting the menu back from there. Now I can prove this now by going into menu number three which is the input output menu and there's a command there called write port. Now if I do port output two and set it to a zero what will happen is that its LED will change to red. You see now and if I set it back to a 1, it'll change back to its normal green colour. If I now unplug the cable, we see that the device has been removed. And now we're back on the local debug interface. If I do a help, we can see that we're in the original menu, which was a USB menu. And of course, if I reconnect again, I I then have the capability to repeat the command and now I'm communicating back with this device again. Many thanks for watching this video and good luck with your own USB CDC connection work.